Can you really rebuild a carburetor without buying something from Harbor Freight? The answer is no. Hey guys, Octane Restorations, and we are back with a 1988 through 2000 Honda Goldwing GL1500. Whew, we're going to get better one of these days of saying that. But this tutorial is for how to rebuild a carburetor after disassembly and cleaning. So first we're going to go over some of the tools you need, and then we're actually going to go through the entire process itself. So let's go ahead and get to the tools that you will need for this. First and most important tool, it's some JIS screwdrivers. I've harped on these in the last few videos, but JIS screws are not Phillips. And if you use a Phillips head on a JIS screw, you can round it out real bad. So get you a good set of JIS screws. It's kind of an investment, but it'll pay off in the end if you work on a lot of these. Next up is a slotted or flathead screwdriver, just to remove and install the jets. Just get you a decent one, one that fits good. I've got some expensive ones, but I do like to have some cheap ones just so I can shape them if I need them. Then some pliers, just to like install a hose clamp, stuff like that. A little bit of grease. It sounds weird, but if you're having a problem with a gasket stain or like the float bowl gasket, a little bit of grease, like just a dab of it, on the gasket itself onto the metal will keep it from moving. Plus it won't cause any damage. Then a carb rebuild kit for your year specifically. On the carb rebuild kits, the 88 through 91s are the same and then the 92s through 2000 are all the same. So but just get your get your kit for your specific year bike. Then the socket set, if you don't have one, this is just the cheapest one I could find. But let's go ahead and let's get to it. If you didn't buy a rebuild kit like say you just had a few o-rings that needed to be replaced. This nitro o-ring kit, this is a metric version from Harbor Freight. I have one of these in my shop and I actually use them pretty often for their o-ring assortments. So just little little trick, something good to keep handy. But again, a carb rebuild kit is the way to go. This carburetor got a rebuild kit Last year, I worked on this bike previously, it ran good, but then it sit for about eight months or so, nine months. So I know a lot of the gaskets, jets, everything in there are good. So I'm just cleaning this one, but if this were you and this bike's been sitting a while and you haven't put a rebuild kit on it within the last year, then I would get a, I would get a rebuild kit and replace everything inside the rebuild kit. It comes with all the gaskets you need, should come with all the O-rings, everything that you should need for this motorcycle. But for odds and ends, I really like the Harbor Freight O-ring assortment kit. As you can see, just that spritz of carb cleaner, like we showed last episode. It's really good for cleaning out them jets. Also, Honda recommends you use compressed air if you're going to clean anything. They don't recommend a wire brush or a drill bit. Part of the shop manual, it's just compressed air and solvents but you got to keep the solvents away from all your rubber or everything like that but again if it's fully disassembled shouldn't be any problem at all so got that one sprayed good now we're just going to go the same process to the other one we're just going to be spraying in all orifices <laughs> That is a term that is used in the proper context here. An orifice generally means a hole or vent that something passes through to a body. And in this case, we have a carburetor body and we have holes that air, fuel, and the mixture pass through. So in this case, <laughs> I don't know if you've thought about it like this, but the carburetor does have orifices. So, but again, we're just spraying through all the holes. <laughs> I'll call them holes from now on. We're just spraying all the holes. Clean it out properly. So I did mention this in my last video. Whenever it comes to cleaning jets, jets are what the gasoline gets sucked through by the air going into the engine, creates that mixture. They can get clogged with gasoline and to clean those jets, Honda does not recommend to use a wire brush or a tiny drill bit. A wire brush you know you pull out a single strand of wire run it in the jets and it removes that blockage 
but Honda does not recommend that. Honda recommends using a cleaner and compressed air to remove that blockage. Honda states that using something like a wire off of a wire brush or using the end of a small drill bit will actually increase the hole of the jet which will mess up your air to fuel mixture ratio and the reason they say this is because the jets are brass. Brass is generally a softer metal than like steel would be. If you've ever tried to remove a carburetor jet that's been frozen you might have known that it's pretty easy to strip them out even though they're a flat blade but I just wanted to mention that while I pulled this jet out and while we we're just cleaning some of this before we start the full assembly that Honda does not recommend you use a wire off a wire brush or a small drill bit to clean those passages. I personally, that is one of the main things I use. I even carry a wire brush in my tool bag <laughs> just for that purpose so I can steal bristles off of it to clean jets. I have not had one enlarge the diameter size of the hole in the jet to the point where it messed up the air fuel mixture ratio but it's just something that Honda mentioned and they had it in big bold letters in one of their service manuals so I decided to tell y'all. Here I'm just doing the same thing, I'm installing jets. If you watch my other videos, you would know that you need to keep your jets and everything like that separate. So you know, you might soak one carburetor with all the pieces in one bucket and the other carburetor with all the other jets and screws and etc. and the other. Honda's shop manual, again it's a Honda thing, they want you to keep the pieces separate. Some motorcycles, the carburetors have different jets. On this one, it seemed like both of the carburetors had the exact same size jets. I did not see any jets that were obviously different, but you know, sometimes they're just, you know, one might be a 120 and the other's a 125, which the uh, difference would be pretty much noticeable to the naked eye. But theoretically, you should have soaked everything in different buckets, keeping it carburetor specific. But now I'm just looking, making sure all the grease and grime is done. I'm installing the bottom of the float bowl. This is where that grease comes in. If your float bowl gasket does not want to stay on, use a dab of grease and it will just keep that rubber clinging to the metal. If you buy new gaskets, it probably won't be a problem. But if you're trying to reuse a gasket that might have swelled, then you can use a little dab of grease just to keep it tacked on. But I'm going to shut up and let you watch the rebuilding process because this side is pretty much the same as the other. So if you want to watch how I put the float in and everything like that, you can. It's just held in by a single pin. You have a float needle that controls the gasoline going inside the carburetor. So what happens is the float rises, it pushes that needle up, which seats the needle. The tip of the needle is most of the time it's going to be rubber and it's going to close it off. And then whenever gasoline drains down, the float lowers and that needle lowers, creating a passage that gasoline can flow through. So if you just look at it before you disassemble and take a few pictures, it'll become more apparent. I didn't show that in here but just take videos and take pictures of you doing your things. So now I'm just removing some of the screws that I set in there. Normally I try to replace screws whenever I remove them. Then I remove the piece and then replace the screw just to keep track of them. But, so I'm just taking those off and installing the vacuum slide. And there's a diaphragm up here that you got to keep rubber parts away or it'll swell. The vacuum slide diaphragm. Now before y'all go run to the comments, <laughs> some people do call it a vacuum operated piston. Pretty much what happens is whenever you 
really start to accelerate on your motorcycle it's sucking in more air and so that slide goes up into the top of the carburetor and allows more air to come into the engine it's pretty ingenious design but right here since both of the carburetors have been rebuilt fully i am lining it up and as you see i'm going to be referring to pictures on my phone this is my fourth or fifth gl 1500 carburetor and i still take pictures and videos of every one i do there's a little difference in some of the years so like an 88 will be different than a 99 or a 2000 so i always take pictures and videos just to ensure that my carburetor is going to be assembled properly but now we're just getting it mocked up installing the accelerator pump everything like that There are a few linkages that control the throttle that keep these together on this motorcycle. I believe it's something tiny like an 8mm that you got to unscrew and put the linkage on and then screw it back. So I'm trying to just ensure I don't miss anything. One problem with replacing screws as you go <laughs> is at the end you're not going to be left with a screw left over if you forgot to put something there. So now I'm just coming over and making sure the linkages are properly aligned and tightened, which is what I was tightening right there. So now we're installing the accelerator pump. I had to get a new set of gloves, rip the other one. Speaking of gloves, Harbor Freight normally has a pretty good deal on these gloves. I'll wait till they go on sale for like five bucks a box. Get me two or three boxes, be perfect. These are your carburetor drain lines. They go in here kind of funky. I'm not too worried about these lines because to access the carburetor drain, normally you gotta take off the radiator. So it's a pain in the butt. Normally I'm just going to disconnect the fuel pump and then run the motorcycle till it stalls. If I'm trying to empty out the carburetor otherwise like I was saying per the shop manual you gotta remove the radiator <laughs> to drain the car bowls which is kind of excessive I would much rather just take off the seat pull off all your wiring that goes to the fuel pump and then just start your motorcycle so now I'm installing that bottom bracket that connects to the antifreeze lines the lines that come off the radiator and get filled with antifreeze now I'm reinstalling that top plate. And then there are a few things that you gotta install that are left. So there should be a little Phillips that connects to the bottom of the plate. Why are you disassembling? Well, I was referring back to my pictures and I think the fuel line was twisted wrongly. And I don't want to get everything reassembled and then try to put on the motorcycle and then not line up right. So as you see, I'm just changing the angles on the fuel lines a little bit. It's easier to do it now when it's on the bench and kind of in front of you versus in the motorcycle. So now we're going to reinstall everything. Again, there's that little Phillips that goes in the middle that connects a linkage to that plate that is on top of the carburetor. So you have to install this screw before you install the four screws that connect to the radiator line bracket, which is what that right there, I just made it up and called it. It's kind of weird, but I install screws and bolts in a star pattern, kind of like you do lug nuts on a car. It's just something that I've always done. Kind of like an OCD thing. And then I go back and tighten them afterwards. I'm lubricating your vacuum operated pistons, your vacuum slides, and throttle linkages because this one was having a problem with the throttle linkages sticking. But we threw the gloves off, so that means we're pretty much done. I've got these gaskets right here, these rings that we are 
putting back on. And this is a reassembled GL 1500 carburetor. As you can see, it still has to be installed in the motorcycle. <laughs> but all in all, we are finished. Some carbs will have that little bracket that the hoses will slide in, some won't. But this one does, so why not use it? If you reach this point, congratulations. You have a rebuilt GL1500 carburetor to go on your GL1500 motorcycle. Most likely. <laughs> Hopefully you have a carburetor for your motorcycle. But the vacuum operated pistons are moving freely now the throttle linkage is snapping back with a vengeance and it was seized so this rebuild it was successful so this is octane restorations thanks for watching this this is a tutorial on how to rebuild the carburetor on a 1988 to 2000 gl 1500 check the channel for more gl 1500 related content and other motorcycle tutorials so thanks for watching this is octane restorations you have a good rest of your day mm -hmm.